Hello and welcome to World of Tanks with me, Murray. Today I'm going to be showing you two games in the um, M5 Stewart. And this first game is going to go to show you the importance of the different types of ammunition which you can get in the game. Now you might notice that my M5 is currently not fully upgraded in this game. It has got the top gun, I think it's got the top, um, I think it's got top everything except the top turret and the top uh, radio. Radio being the most expensive piece of equipment on this tank. So the game starts, I decide that I'm going to go to my usual position up on the hill. And the hill is one of the most important parts of this map because it gives you not only a way in which you can reset the capture point, but it also gives you a point in which you can basically scout the entire enemy team. If anyone's sat in their base and you're in a higher tier scout, um, You'll notice that I don't have much equipment on this tank because it's so low tier, but if you have got a higher tier tank, you're generally able to have a view range which goes all the way into the enemy capture point. So it's an incredibly important position to take, especially because you can do things like this. Now you see that Marder has only just arrived and he's showing me his back, so I can pretty much almost take him out of the game and he's barely even done anything. Sorry, I've just realised that the um, teams aren't showing the names of the tanks. So, this position is incredibly important because as you can see, it's giving me a position where I can shoot at all the enemy tanks and get either their flanks or their rears, which is incredibly important because the M5 Stuart hasn't got a lot of penetration. And you'll notice that I haven't got any APCR or high explosive ammunition. Now, Unfortunately, this is a tier 4 tank, otherwise I would give it APCR and high explosive, but because it's so low tier, I just can't really afford to spend so many, so much credits on a low tier tank, and you'll notice that I'm struggling to get through that B1. So, at this point, I've unloaded two clips into him and done one damage out of the 10 shots I fired, and I'm just about ready to give up, so I change position, and I try and get a little bit more of a flanking shot, but even then, you can notice there that I was aiming my gun down at the flattest surface of his tank and I still didn't manage to go through. It looks like artillery took him out, so I now change my focus onto the tank that was shooting at me. I'm not too bothered about moving because I know that their um, SPG, if he is focusing on me, he's focusing on the wrong tank. And if he's not focusing on me, then I'm fine to shoot at that panzer because I had more health and a better gun. So again, I'm not willing to give up this position until I have completely exhausted targets, because being so hard, high up, gives me a position where I can spot and do damage, which is really, really important. So I set that Panzer III on fire, leaving him with a one-shot kill, and I do my best to change targets onto that Valentine, and end up damaging both the Panzer and the Valentine in one click. That's one of the problems with the M5 Stuart's gun, is that even though it's an autoloader, it's very machine gun-like in the way that once you fire the shells once, that's it. Now that there, you probably didn't catch it, but what I did there was I took my own tracks off coming down the hill, and that was a fatal, fatal problem in this game for me. Now, generally I would be willing to let the tracks repair on their own, but unfortunately I got greedy. Now if I'd have stayed down there, I would have been able to shoot at that Panzer III with pretty much the same effect that I had shooting in from over here. I just would have been shooting at his lower glaciers rather than his side. Now you see that as soon as I've reloaded, I change my shells and my um, gun position to aim at the enemy SPG. But now that he's disappeared, I'm not interested in going over there. I'm not interested in him shooting me and taking me out the game. So instead, I try my best to spot him, give up, and change targets back to the Panzer. Now you'll notice that the artillery just fired, and when you fire in any tank, your camouflage drops to almost zero. So now the Panzer SFL is spotted, I automatically unlock my aim and fire because I know he's about to disappear, and my gun will already be aiming in that position if I go into manual aim. So now I'm thinking I'll go after the AMX-40, I do a quick check around because I can't 
can't really make up my mind on whether or not I should go back and cap. The M8A1 did call for help, and I thought mm, maybe that would help. But I end up changing my mind, and I go round the flank with this SU-85B, and I go to try and take out the AMX-40. Now it's important to note that the AMX-40 hasn't got much armour. A lot of people will tell you, oh, it's got loads of armour. It hasn't. It's got a lot of effective armour. You'll notice as I'm driving round that my gun reticle is going from orange to green, and that's mostly because of the, the, um, the angling. Now you can see there that I just got tracked, and here comes the shell from the Matilda. So like I said, when I tracked myself coming off that hill, if I'd have just given it the 5 or 10 seconds it took to come back up naturally, I would have saved myself from pretty much dying there. So, you know, that was disappointing, but I managed to get 1,108 damage done, and this ended up being an ace tanker game. Now, what I did in that game wasn't especially amazing, but I hope that you could see that while I was using that little hill, that I was able to spot the enemy tanks and shoot at them, and that was meaning that they couldn't push forwards or they'd give me their rear, but they also couldn't focus their attention on me because my allies who were going through the cap circle were also shooting at them, giving them a way in which they could not push forwards and couldn't stay where they were, meaning they were trapped in a crossfire. Now, at this point you probably saw that I said, you know, cap or kill, doesn't matter. And I said that because the Matilda is one of the infantry class tanks of the British. It goes at approximately 20 kilometers per hour. And just judging by its position, I could tell there was no way in hell it was going to get all the way from where it is, all the way over to our cap circle. So we end up winning through capping. So hopefully that gave you a basic idea of how to get an ace tanker in the M5 Stuart. And I'll see you in the next game where we'll see a bit more of an exciting game, I think. So I'll see you there. So hello and welcome to the second battle. Um, you can probably see that the countdown is going down, but that's about to go back up. I think it's a slight bug with the replay system. I'm not 100% sure why the countdown is still going down, but you know, what can you do? So here we go. Now, as you can see with this replay, my tank is now fully upgraded. I have got the top radio, I have got the top turret, the top gun, the top everything. So. You can see as well that I haven't learned from my mistakes. You know, let's learn from what I do and what I say, not from how I actually perform in the game. So you'll be able to see it that in this game that the M5 Stuart is particularly good at taking out tanks of the same and lower tier when they've got them quite low armor values. Now, you know, this is going to be the general tier fours leaving the cap circle, we had the electro fire randomly there, but um, the enemy Panzer 38T has wished us good luck, which is nice, you don't really see that in enough games I don't think, so, um, yeah that was a nice way to start off the game, no one ridiculed me for putting in the please join Wolfpack message, which is always nice, you get a load of arseholes who end up going and doing that, so, popped into the game and straight away I go over to my favourite position if I'm in a medium or heavy tank in higher tiers and somehow that Panzer 3 managed to get behind me. I have no idea how he managed it but um, you know kudos to him, he really got me by surprise there. He just didn't quite have the gun in order to take me out which is a shame because he could have done really well from that position and that ambush. So what I'm doing here is I'm using basically my camo to make sure that any hits I take, I'm going to be able to at least double in return damage. And what you can see me doing here is I'm peeking out, firing my clip of five shells, and then I'm returning to reload. But also what I'm doing is I'm angling my armor as much as possible and giving them as little of a target as I possibly can. You'll also notice that when I'm spotting, I go forwards and then come back. That's because even if you have six sense, which I unfortunately don't have in this tank, it will only pop up after four seconds. So it's always worth going forwards, coming back, and then tanks will be spotted as you're coming back in, which will allow you to focus your aim and allow you to do a bit more damage than you would have done before. 
So, you know, managed to take out one tank so far, already done 440 damage, so it's already a pretty good game. The scores are going well, 7-3. But as you can see on the mini-map, I'll make that a little bit bigger now, you can see that no one has gone down the 1-2-3 line. Which, if I were in a, um, possibly a heavy tank, I would have been tempted to return to their base, uh, to our base, sorry. But seeing as I'm a light tank, my initial response is I'm going to drive forwards and I'm going to take out anything surrounding their base and then loop around behind them and try and get some capture points. So what I do is I come forwards, spot this Marder 2, I decide to drive up as close as I can because the reticle keeps expanding every time I fire. And the closer you are to the target, the more precise your accuracy is going to be. So I take out the Marder 2 and then I spot the T28. Take a quick aim to see where he is, decide there's not enough of him showing, and I drive forwards again. Again, my position in this is I want to be as close as possible so that I can get as many shells as possible in and give the aiming reticle as small a chance as possible as missing him. Now, unfortunately, what I do here is I fire the shells in such a way that he's angled to give those the armour that he's got on his rear enough effective armour to bounce my shells. And you can see me rocking backwards and forwards there to try and miss, uh, mess up the way in which he's aiming so that when he thinks I'm going forwards he'll aim forwards and I'll go backwards so that wherever he's aiming I'm not going to be. That's basically what that rocking is for. Now you can see they've basically taken out everything that was on our cap point and they're going straight into our capture. So what I'm doing here is I'm going up behind them, knowing that all of them are going to be focusing on the T28, the Matilda who unfortunately just died. I did a great job defending the base, and I'm now telling them to cap. Because, you know, worst case scenario is I'm going to die defending the cap. Which I would have done if everyone on their team had decided to come for me. As it stands, they don't do that and so I keep putting shells into these tanks that are trying to cap and I keep spotting them for my allies meaning that no matter which one of them is capping they're always going to lose a capture point. Now you can see here that I change target from the Panzer 1C to the A20 and as soon as I'm done with the A20 I'm going to start firing at that M5 Stuart. The reason I'm doing that is because the cap points are being shared and each time I hit one of their tanks I'm reducing their capture points down to zero and by constantly changing which target I'm firing at, I make it so that none of them are holding very many capture points. And so pretty much now it's just a quick finish up. They've only got two left and both of them are on low health. So I take out their Panzer 1C, top gun, and now I change my target over to the M5 Stuart, set him on fire, and then And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you get seven kills in an M5 Stuart, high caliber with 1,320 damage done, and an ace tanker. So I really hope that those two replays went to show you a bit of the map awareness skills that I use when I'm judging what positions I want. And it also went to show you that the M5 Stuart is a particularly good tank at low tiers. It's not very good at higher tiers, and at some point I might get a video up explaining that, but that'll be up to what kind of um, response these kind of videos get. So if you want to see one of a um, quick review of how the M5 Stuart does against top tier tanks, I'd be more than happy to make a replay of that. If you want to see some higher tiers, drop me a comment and tell me about that. But as always, please remember to give me a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the videos. It really does mean the world to me. And hope you have a nice day.